an eigenvector table is a lot easier to interpret than it might first appear when you look at all these numbers. These numbers just represent the LCAO construction of a set of molecular orbitals. In this particular case, the set of molecular orbitals belonging to the molecule ethylene. Let's break down this table so we can see how this set of numbers relates to the molecular orbital pictures at the bottom of this page. The root number at the top corresponds to a molecular orbital. In other words, each column that you see, 1 through 7, is a molecular orbital. The energy that you see for each column corresponds to the energy of that molecular orbital. And so in the picture at the bottom, energy goes from the lowest to the highest, from bottom to top. And so molecular orbital 1 is that picture at the bottom on up through molecular orbital 7. Each row in the eigenvector table corresponds to an atomic orbital. It could be an S, a PX, PY, and PZ. And those atomic orbitals are located on various atoms. In this particular case, the molecule ethylene, there are six atoms. And we'll keep the numbering just as it's shown here, carbon atom 1, carbon atom 2, and then hydrogens 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let's start with molecular orbital 1 and try to understand how these numbers relate to the picture that you see at the bottom. The most important LCAO contribution from carbon atom number 1 is the 2s orbital, and we can see that by the magnitude of that coefficient. Similarly, for carbon atom 2, the largest contribution comes from the 2s orbital. The sign of the coefficient tells us whether there's constructive or destructive interaction between the atomic orbitals. And we can see that all of the 1s on hydrogen and the 2s on carbon have the same sign. It's negative in this case. And so all of the circles that represent the 1s on hydrogen and 2s on carbon are unshaded. For molecular orbital 2, we'll see that the signs are not all the same. The dominant contribution on carbon atom 1 is a positive 2s. On carbon atom 2, the dominant contribution is a negative 2s. And so notice how we represent shaded and unshaded. The hydrogen atoms, 3 and 4, are unshaded because they're negative, whereas 5 and 6 are shaded because they're positive. For molecular orbital number 3, we get contributions from Py, and those Py's will end up making a nice pi bond because they have the same phase, they have the same sign of their coefficients. The hydrogen atoms, so 3 and 5, are going to have the negative values, whereas 4 and 6 are going to have positive values to match the lobes of those pi orbitals. Molecular orbital 4 has its dominant contributions on carbon from the 2px orbital, but notice that the sign on carbon 1 and 2 is opposite. How might we think about the sign of the 2px orbital? Well, it has a directionality that we could assign, say, from the shaded lobe to the unshaded lobe. And notice that 2px on carbon 1 and carbon 2 have opposite directionalities, and so that's why the sign of the coefficient reverses. Now on the hydrogen atoms, hydrogen atom 3 and 4 have positive values, and also on 5 and 6 they have positive values to match the lobes on those 2px orbitals. Molecular orbital 5 has its major contribution on carbon from the 2py. Notice that carbon 1 and 2 have 2py's of opposite sign. So when we start looking at the hydrogen atoms, hydrogen atoms 3 and 4 have opposite signs as well in order to match the phases of the lobes on their adjacent carbons, and the same thing for 5 and 6. Molecular orbital 6 is a pure pi orbital. It receives its entire atomic orbital contributions from 2pz orbitals centered on carbon. All the other orbital contributions are zero. The same is true for carbon atom number 2, and all of its contributions from the other atomic orbitals are zero, as is all of the contributions from the hydrogen. The sign of those two PZs are the same, so it makes a nice pi bond. For molecular orbital number seven, we have a very similar situation, except that now the two PZs on carbon one and carbon two have opposite signs. Just like before, the only contributions are coming from the two PZ orbitals, so this is a pure pi orbital. Hydrogen doesn't contribute either. Because the signs of those two pz orbitals are opposite, we have a node between carbon atom number 1 and carbon 2, and so this is a pi antibond. 